This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2017. Is Bone Broth Really a Cure-All? By Nadia Mazari with idealnutrition.com.au. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Hi there, and welcome to another Tuesday edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is one of many podcasts where we read to you from blogs for free so that you don't have to read them yourself, except on Fridays. That's where I usually answer your questions. Now, to check out our other shows, just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this. And with that, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. Is Bone Broth Really a Cure-All? By Nadia Mazari with idealnutrition.com.au Winter is well and truly upon us. With it comes the barrage of comforting soup recipes, immune-boosting remedies, and winter fitspo. Bone Broth appears to tick all three of these boxes. What's more, those on the bandwagon claim that it's a cure-all for a multitude of common ailments, things such as poor gut health, joint pain, and skin aging. This article will, therefore, explore whether the hype around bone broth is based on science or science fiction. What is bone broth? Many of us may believe that we can use broth, stock, and bone broth interchangeably. However, the preparation methods of each differ slightly, and as such, so does their nutritional value. Understandably, not knowing this makes it all too easy to fall prey to all the noise and hype surrounding certain foods. Bone broth is essentially a fusion of broth and stock, glamorized for the health and wellness industry. Stock is typically prepared by simmering animal bones with herbs, spices, and mirepoix, which is a vegetable flavor base of carrots, celery, and onions for 12 to 24 hours. The resulting liquid is relatively neutral in taste and has a thick mouthfeel, owing to the gelatin, minerals, and collagen released from the simmered bones. These qualities make stock an ideal flavor base for dishes such as soups, casseroles, and stews. Broth, on the other hand, is traditionally prepared by simmering meat with various herbs and spices for 8 to 12 hours. This lends the liquid a rich, flavorful profile that makes it easy to consume on its own. The bone broth marketed by the wellness industry, however, is stock simmered with some meat. The resulting liquid is therefore rich in flavor and thick in texture enabling it to be touted as a hearty meal alternative. In terms of nutrition, the main difference between stock, broth, and bone broth is their total calorie contribution. Broth typically contains half the calories of stock per serving. This is because stock contains almost twice as much fat, protein, and carbohydrates per serving due to the use of mineral and fat-dense bones. This then increases with the addition of meat, as in bone broth. Why the hype? Bone broth was popularized by Dr. Kellyanne, pioneer of the 21-day bone broth diet. This involves consuming paleo-based meals five days a week. Bone broth is then consumed as snacks within these meals and as meal replacements on the remaining two fasting days of the week. Dieters inherently refrain from dairy, grains, refined sugar, alcohol, gluten, soy, and processed foods. Dr. Kellyanne and other proponents claim that consuming high levels of collagen via the bone broth diet will aid in weight loss, fight the physical effects of aging, assist with regulating blood glucose levels, improve gut health, assist with post-workout recovery, reduce joint pain, and improve energy levels. The apparent whole-body global effects of this diet sound revolutionary. It's no wonder people are keen to try it out for themselves. What does the science say? Bone broth is endorsed as a superfood because of its supposed collagen content. Collagen is one of the most abundant sources of protein in our body, being the main structural component of connective tissue. Several studies have shown that hydrolyzed collagen supplements, meaning the collagen has been broken down into its relative amino acids, may alleviate joint pain associated with osteoarthritis. However, the jury is still out on whether collagen supplementation holds true to other wellness claims. Moreover, there's limited evidence to suggest bone broth can replace therapeutic collagen supplementation, even in such cases as reducing joint pain associated with osteoarthritis. Bone broth typically contains whole collagen, leached straight from the animal bones used during its preparation. Collagen is primarily made up of the amino acids hydroxyproline, proline, and glycine. 
These amino acids are the functional constituents of collagen. Enzymes, such as collagenase, break down any whole collagen we've consumed into these amino acids before it's absorbed into our bloodstream and utilized by the body. Now, here's the catch. Although you may be consuming bone broth to assist with anti-aging, the homeostatic mechanisms of the body inherently prioritizes where protein is needed most. If you were recovering from a surgical wound, for instance, the majority of collagen consumed from bone broth would inevitably be broken down into its constituent amino acids and used at that site, rather than for firming, say, the skin on your face. Bone broth contains minimal amounts of the amino acid leucine, which is essential for skeletal muscle repair. As such, bone broth isn't necessarily the ultimate post-workout recovery drink. You are better off having a naturally high-protein source such as lean beef or chicken or even soy, beans, and lentils. A recent study also found that the mineral and collagen content of bone broths could differ significantly across preparations. This research concluded that bone broth often does not provide sufficient amounts of collagen precursors in comparison to the dosages that have been found to be beneficial. Although some calcium is leached out of the bones used in bone broth, it's approximately 10 milligrams or less per cup. It's insignificant in terms of the recommended dietary intakes. Similarly, more than 80% of Australian adults do not meet their fiber requirements. The lack of whole grains found in the bone broth diet would undoubtedly compound this. Whole grains are a beneficial component of a healthy diet, and their beneficial effects extend far beyond keeping our bowels regular. Many of the advertised benefits of the bone broth diet don't necessarily come from drinking bone broth itself. A lot of the benefits come from the reduction of certain contributors to the diet. For example, it can look like gut health has improved since certain foods that were triggering symptoms such as bloating have now been minimized, or weight loss can occur due to an overall reduction in energy intake. The bottom line. The hype for bone broth appears to be ahead of the evidence. While it's a delicious base for winter meals, it's hardly a nutritious meal replacement, nor the answer to numerous common ailments. If your aim is to replenish your body after a workout or increase collagen synthesis for anti-aging benefits, aim to meet your protein requirements for the day first. If you've been advised by a health practitioner to consume collagen supplements for joint pain or injury recovery, it's best you follow their advice rather than drinking copious amounts of bone broth. Similarly, address any concerns for a particular ailment with the relevant practitioner. If you are otherwise healthy, aim to eat a wide variety of fruit, vegetables, dairy, grains, and protein. You just listened to the post titled, Is Bone Broth Really a Cure-All? by Nadia Mazari with idealnutrition.com.au. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Today's author was mentioning that bone broth can contain some calcium, but it's likely a very low amount. Depending on the brand and how it was made, the bone broth itself may only contain about 10 milligrams of calcium. Most health organizations recommend that adults consume between 1,000 and 1,200 milligrams of calcium per day. Compare that to the 10 milligrams you might get from bone broth, and you can quickly see it's not very much. Usually when we think of food sources of calcium, We think about dairy products, right? Milk, the products made from milk, like yogurt and cheese and so on. Many are surprised to learn that calcium isn't just found in dairy products or other foods that were made from calcium-rich body parts like bone broth. So if dairy's not your thing, broccoli, spinach, and tofu, for example, also contain calcium. So to repeat what today's author Nadia said, eat a wide variety of foods to make sure you meet these daily calcium recommendations and you'll probably meet the other recommendations as well. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber of the show. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.